Hello, everyone. Welcome to lab three. In this lab, we're going to introduce each parameter group of the Moby Drive. This will help you navigate what folders you should be going into for certain information. Some of the parameters are only informational and can't be modified. Other parameters you will work with more commonly when setting up the Moby Drive for the application. The Moby Drive that I'm demoing is not connected to a higher level PLC. So I will be controlling it via its terminals using a digital input and output switch box. The Moby Drive won't operate the motor without being cleared from an inhibit state. So DI00 is a permanent input on the Moby Drive and it can't be reassigned. So in later lab exercises, this input will need to remain switched on to be clear from the inhibit. The Moby Drive comes with seven basic digital inputs that can be assigned as needed for the application. This demo unit I have has a terminal expansion card installed in the option bay, so it has additional inputs that are numbered DI10 through DI17. The Moby Drive comes with one analog input that I can control with this rotary dial. Since this demo has a terminal expansion card installed, this also comes with an additional analog input that can be controlled with this rotary dial. These LEDs in the center of the switch box are connected to the output terminals of the Moby Drive. I will be using this switch box throughout the lab activities that we will go through. With the Moby Drive parameters, there are two methods to make a parameter change. One method are entry boxes that you will enter in a numerical value that you want to set. The unit for the parameter value can vary from seconds to percent to speed, etc. So you do have to pay attention to the unit that's beside the entry box to know what the value represents. The other method to change a parameter are with predefined drop-down menus. Okay, let's head into the software and explore the Moby Drive parameters further. All right, we're back in the software. Let's go into our Moby Drive and then look at the Moby Drive parameters. So I will right click on the Moby Drive, go to this menu item called Startup. I will pull my cursor over to the right hand pop up menu and then come down to this item called Parameter Tree Online. Now you've seen the Parameter Tree in the previous exercise, but if I remind you, the Unit Information tab is where you can look and see what the model type of your Moby Drive is. You can see its operating mode. You can also look and see if it has any option cards installed and then what their model type is. And then you can also look at the motor parameter set that is currently loaded. If I go to the option above unit information called IPOS information, the IPOS information window will only have data in it if there is an IPOS program loaded. So currently you can see that I am using a table positioning IPOS program which is an application module offered by SEW. It gives the date that it was loaded to the Moby Drive, and it tells me all the tasks for the program are currently started. If you look below the tasks, you'll see these terminal numbers called X15, X62, and X14. If you remember from the encoder option card presentation, you'll remember that X15 is the motor encoder, Terminal X62 is common with our DIP encoder card or with encoder options that have an SSI encoder type input. Then X14 is an encoder option that would be either for an external encoder input or simulation out for synchronous operation. I'm currently not using anything plugged into any type of these terminals, so that's why the value is currently at zero for both. Now, if we go to this first folder called folder zero display values, I'll open it up. If we go to this top item called process values, you'll see that everything is grayed out. I can't actually set any data in here. So say for instance, like the DC link voltage, if I try to type in a number here, it, it doesn't do anything because it's currently grayed out. So folder zero is only for informational purposes. It's not possible to set any data inside of folder zero because it's only data back for you to interpret. There is one exception to that in item seven called unit data. 
there is a parameter 78 for the technology function. And then sometimes you know you need to come in here and set this manually, but typically if you're using an IPOS program, it will set this automatically for you and you would not need to set this manually. But this is the only parameter in the entire folder group zero that can actually be changed. Everything else is only for informational purposes. And then also for parameter 78, this would only be for special scenarios. So you shouldn't be anticipating having to come in here unless you're using a very special scenario of an IPOS program that would need this functionality turned on. So if you're looking in the lab instructions, one of the first questions you may see is what is the current DC link voltage of the memory drive? And then we can see that right here in parameter eight, DC link voltage is currently at 637 volts DC. The next question in the lab instructions asks what happens with the status display group. So if we open up folder 01 status displays, you'll see that the current inverter status is disabled and it's currently inhibited. One of the questions in the lab instructions says what happens when you flip the DI00 switch on the control box? So I'll go ahead and do that and then watch the inverter status and then watch the operating status and see if you notice any changes. All right, DI00 is now active. Did you notice any changes? The inverter status stayed at disabled, but the operating status changed to no enable. Okay, I will flip DI00 back off. The next question in the lab instructions asks, what is the inverter's temperature? So the inverter's temperature will be called the heat sink temperature. And that's right here, parameter 14, and it's currently at 29 degrees Celsius. The next question in the lab instructions asks, what happens when you turn the set point one dial on the control box? So to see the set point one dial, I need to close status displays, come down into item two, analog set points. And then now I can look at the status of analog input one and then analog input two. So let me go ahead and turn the dials on set point one and then set point two and watch these and see if you can notice the change. I'm now turning set point one. Set point one is all the way up. Now I will turn set point one down. Okay, now I will go to set point two. It is all the way down and I will turn it up. Now I'm turning set point two down. All right. Did you notice the change? You should have seen that the analog input sweeped from minus 10 volts to positive 10 volts. The next question in lab instructions talks about item three, the binary inputs of the basic unit. So I will go ahead and close the analog set points and go to item three. And this subgroup will show what the status of the input actually is. So I will test digital input 00 through digital input number seven, and then we should see that this checkbox comes on as I go through each input to confirm that the inputs are working properly. Here's digital input 00 switching on. Here's digital input 01 switching on. Here's two. Three, four, five, six, and finally seven.
All right, you should have saw that there is check marks that came in each one of those boxes as I toggled the input on and then off. The next questions in the lab instructions ask about digital input 10 through digital input 17. Now this Mobi Drive has an expansion card for the digital inputs and outputs installed. So to see that, I will need to close item three binary inputs of the basic unit and then open up item four, the binary inputs option. All right, and then now I will flip the switches, DI10 through 17 in the same pattern, and then look through these checkboxes to make sure they all populate as I go through this. Here's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. All right, you should have seen the check marks populate in each one of those boxes as I went through the inputs. Now, if we close this, we also have outputs. So item five is the binary outputs of the basic unit. Now, some of these digital outputs are configurable, but they will only give me a value if it happens to be true. So currently the break released signal that is permanently assigned to DB00 is unchecked because the brake is currently not released because the drive is not enabled. If you look to the switch box, you'll see that the light for digital output 01 is currently on, and there is also a check mark here, but the parameter assignment says slash fault. Well, this slash means normally closed. So if the Mobi Drive is not faulted, then this output will be on. But if the Mobi Drive does fault, then this output will go off because a slash before the parameter assignment means normally closed. If I needed to see the status of the outputs on the expansion card that's installed, then I can come to item six called binary outputs of the option. And here we can view the state of those outputs. Now I do want to point out that these windows will show what the function of the terminal is, but we cannot make any changes here because this is in folder group zero, that's for viewing only. If we needed to change the function of the terminal, then we would have to go into a different parameter group to make those changes. I'll point out that parameter location shortly. The next question in the lab instructions asks about the unit data item. So let's close this and then go to number seven, unit data. And then we can see here is the model type of our Mobi drive. And then it also gives us a list of each one of the option cards that we have installed. So if you want to find the firmware of your Mobi drive, you have to look down to parameter 76, which is the basic unit firmware. Don't look at the field bus firmware because that's not the same firmware number. The Mobi drive firmware would be this bottom item right here. The next questions in the lab instructions talk about folder group number one, the set points and ramp generators. So let's close this folder group zero and then go to folder group one. And then if we look in item 10, which is the set point selection, parameter 100 is where we can tell the Mobi drive where it should be looking for its set points. These set points can be fixed parameter values, field bus values, or the other options that are listed here. And then parameter 101 is the control signal source. So do you want the Mobi drive to respond from the terminals, from the field bus, or from some other type of network that is supported on the Mobi drive. So currently the way this is set, because the IPOS program that is loaded is table positioning over the terminals, then it is currently getting its speed set point from the IPOS program. But if there was not an IPOS program loaded to this Mobi drive, then the speed set point in the way this is configured would be from a bipolar analog input or from a fixed set point. And then it would be controlled via the terminals on the Mobi drive. 
If I wanted to see the speed set points for this movie drive in its basic configuration, I can close item 10 and then come down to the fixed set points, item 16. And then we can see that there are three different set point speeds that we can set for this movie drive. Now, if you're looking at the parameters and you see speed ramps one, speed ramps two, fixed set points one, fixed set points two, when you see this number two that follows the parameter list, then that means it is the second parameter set. So currently we are only using the first parameter set. We're not using any type of function to switch over to a secondary parameter set. So don't get confused by fixed set points one and fixed set points two, because fixed set points two is only valid when you're using the parameter set number two. Otherwise, you can just leave these to the default setting since they're not being used. If you look at these parameters, you can see that the first set point in 1.1 is currently set to 150. If I wanted to change this to 1000 and then click off into a different parameter, you can see that it changed back to 150. Now, the reason it didn't take is because I didn't press the enter key. So if I want this parameter to take in the movie drive, then I have to press the enter key. So I will type that again, 1000, and then press the enter key on my keyboard. And then now that change has happened immediately in the Mobi Drive, and I don't need to do any type of download to the Mobi Drive because I'm currently online with it. So any changes I make, as long as I press the enter key or make the selection change with a drop down menu, it happens immediately in the Mobi Drive. Okay, so I will take this back to 150 and then press enter again. And then now it's changed in the Mobi Drive again. The last questions of the lab instructions ask, what is the numeric range of parameter 160? When you have entry boxes with numbers, there's a little bit of freedom of what kind of number you can enter. Sometimes they can have decimal places, and then sometimes they may not. But how do you know what the range is that you're allowed to enter? Well, some of that will depend on your actual application limits. You wouldn't want to send a 3000 RPM speed set point to a motor that's only rated for 1800 RPM. So in some instances, these entry boxes will allow you to enter a value that high. So it will be up to you to make sure that you're not entering a value that exceeds what your application can handle. But there are also times where this entry box does have parameter limits where you cannot exceed them. And there's a couple different ways you can find that limit. So if you hover your mouse over a parameter entry box, there's a pop-up that shows you some information about that entry box. You may have to keep doing it because it will automatically disappear. But if you look in the center of that pop-up, you'll see that the minimum value says that it is minus 6,000. The standard value is 150, and that's the default value when you delivery state the movie drive. And then the maximum value is 6,000. So that means if I tried to enter in 6,001, it's going to take it back to 6,000 because that's the maximum. And the same thing for the negative direction. If I went minus 6,001, it's going to change it down to minus 6,000 because that is the physical entry limit for this parameter box. But that would be way too high for the type of motor that I have connected. So it will be on me to make sure I don't enter a value that exceeds the physical motor capability. Now the motor I have connected is an asynchronous AC motor, so its nameplate rating is 1800 RPM. So I would not want to leave this to minus 6000 because that is way too fast for this motor. So I'm going to take this value back into an acceptable range for an AC motor. And then press enter to make the change. All right, let's go look at some of the other parameter groups of the Mobi Drive, and I will point out some common parameters that you will be familiarizing yourself with throughout this training. So folder one, as a summary, is any type of speed ramps or fixed set points of the speed that you have. Item 10 is the set point selection where you can choose if you're controlled from the terminals or the field bus. Folder two is the controller parameters. And this is commonly where you'd come if you want to make custom tuning adjustments to your motor. And that would be in item 20, speed control. Now item 22 through 24 
are only for when you have a DRS 11B option card installed. That's for synchronous operation. And the parameters for that option card can be set through these items here. And items 26 through 28 are for an external PID controller if you have an application that needs to use that. So I'm gonna close this and then go to folder three, motor parameters. And this is where you're gonna find most of your limits for your motor. And then there also are some tuning parameters in here as well. So if you remember, limits one is for parameter set one. Limits two would be for parameter set two. I'm not using parameter set two, so I'm just gonna click on limits one. And you can see we have our start and stop speeds, our minimum and maximum speeds, and then some current and torque limits. If you're making tuning adjustments, there's an additional set of parameters in item 32. And then we're still using only parameter set one, so I'm gonna click on motor adjustment one. And then here are some additional tuning parameters for the motor. Okay, let's look at folder four, reference signals. And this would be used if you are needing to fine tune how an output of the MoDrive responds to different speeds or currents. So this is where you can fine tune how your output signal comes on when you're around a certain value. Folder group five are where you can fine tune how the MoDrive responds to different functions that it's currently monitoring. Item 50 is the most popular one for speed monitoring. And this is where you can adjust how the MoDrive responds to a speed monitoring fault scenario. Folder group six, terminal assignments. This is where you can set the parameter assignment for the binary inputs of the basic unit, the expansion options, and the outputs of the basic unit and the expansion options. Folder group seven are the control functions. This is where you can see how the MoDrive's operating mode is currently set to. Now we don't recommend that you make the change to parameter 700 operating mode here. You can do that through the motor startup and that's a better way to do it to alleviate any problems. So even though it will allow it, don't make the change to your operating mode here that is done through the motor startup. Another common item in folder group seven is the brake function. This is where you can adjust your brake application and releasing times. Remember that brake function one, release time one, application time one are for parameter set one. The brake function two, the release time two, and the application time two are for parameter set two. I do want to mention that these brake release and application times are based on the motor startup and what model motor and brake was entered. These parameters adjust the timing of when the brake engages and releases with the Movie Drive's enable signal. In normal situations, you wouldn't need to adjust these, so I recommend leaving them to what the motor startup proposes. This is one of the many reasons the motor startup needs to be correct for the model type of motor that's installed. If you manually change these to an incorrect value, it could introduce a safety issue such as the load falling with hoists or introducing premature wear to the brake disc, which can affect the stopping and holding torque. Another item in folder seven that's common is the ethernet configuration. This is where you can set your IP address of your ethernet field bus card or Profinet option card if it has one. And then you can tell it if you want it to be a fixed IP address or if you want it to be changed via a DHCP server. This Movi Drive isn't connected to a DHCP server, so I'm going to leave it to the saved or fixed IP address parameters entered above. Folder group eight, the unit functions, is where you can delivery state the Movi Drive. You can set the address for the serial communication and for the SBUS communications that are possible on the MoDrive, Drive. You can also do a fault reset manually through parameter 840. This is an alternative to using the online unit status window in the bottom to reset a fault. You can just come to parameter 840 and then toggle a manual reset. And then in the next lab, you'll see that we will change this modulation frequency 
when we do the startup so that way the memory drive runs quieter. And lastly is folder group nine, which is dedicated to IPOS program functions. Now, if you're using an application from SCW, a lot of this will get set automatically through the application module. But in some instances, if you're using a custom IPOS program, you would also need to come into this parameter group here and make some additional changes to the IPOS program settings through these parameter groups. Some of the common ones are the reference travel settings, the travel parameter settings, the IPOS encoder settings, and any absolute encoder settings can be set here as well. All right, there are a lot of MobyDrive parameters and they're organized into different folders. So don't feel overwhelmed if you're not sure how to find a parameter. That will come with experience and time as you continue to work with the MobyDrive. In the next lab, we will go through how to do a basic motor startup. Thank you for your attention. Take care.